You know you're living history when opening day is in July. And you can't even go to the games. But baseball persists. Nonetheless, better late than never. I have been a Red Sox fan, a Blue Jays fan, a Pirates fan, a Giants fan, a Phillies fan, and now I'm a Braves fan. But whoever your team is, they've got a center fielder, and that's what we're doing today. John Fogarty center field for Matt Marcus, the gentleman with the tremendous idea. But before we continue any further, I would like to thank... From the very bottom of my very heart, Mr. Jeff Johnson and Mr. Richard T. Carlson, no relation to Craig T. Nelson, for signing up for the Patreon supporter of the Cause Club. Gentlemen, thank you so very, very, very much. I just retied this knot. It's not going to happen. <laughs> if you'd like to know what that's all about, the link, of course, is in the description. We're doing this adapted for acoustic guitar singular. Of course, there's a lead guitar player in this song, and there's some spots where John Fogarty just plays a single note. We are going to play the chord that it implies, and I will throw as many noodly doodlies in there uh, to fill it up as I can, so, you know, for when you're at the bleachers that you're not gonna be at. But anyways, the intro, I would do just the same. So E string, third fret, A string, open two, three, D two, G open, like you're making a little C chord there. Followed by open D, D four, G2, then open G, G4, B3, open D. That's the first one. The second one is almost exactly the same. But when we get to the open G string, we go open, two, four, open D. That's the second one. The third one is exactly the same as the first one. And then we play a C chord. We want a G with a B in the bass, so everything about your G chord except the low G note, we're emphasizing that B, so it goes. Then an A minor. And a D. And then we wail away on the G. Now on this G, you can play your pointer fingers conveniently located in the G string 2nd fret and the D string 2nd fret, and you can mess with those notes. Before we go into the verse. The verse goes G, C, G, G, E minor, D. Second half. Got some things you can do on the G, I just wail away on the G. For the C, you can play C at night if you want. You can play regular C if you want, of course, but I like playing C with a G in the top there. I don't know why. You've got your regular C chord and your pinky finger on the E string third fret. I just like this. The G in there is a feature of the C chord already. Look at, there it is, the open G string. So this does not change the C-ness of the chord. Good thing there's no P chord. So, G. My C. G. G. E minor, when we get to D, if you just wanna do two thirds of your D here with your pointer and your middle finger, then your ring finger is available for the G string fourth fret. Second half, G. C of your choice, G. Then, C of your choice, D. And on your G, of course, into the chorus. Put me in coach, G. Now let's switch to a G suspended four. Leave your pinky finger, put your ring finger on E3, your middle finger on A2, and your pointer finger is available for that B string first fret, and then take it off. So if you can hear it, put me in coach. I'm ready to see. Of 
course, you could do none of that G suspended four stuff, or you could just play Tom Petty G right off the bat so that you can have your pointer and some <laughs> I didn't even plan that. Anyway, so that you don't have to do all that switching around, right? But those are all the pieces to the song. After the last chorus, it goes, it chugs away on its G. And then it does its C. G with a B in the bass. A minor. D. And ends it on G. Happy opening day, everybody. What a mood to be in or something. Thank you so much for being here. I hope you enjoyed that. I hope that was helpful. And I will see you next time with more stuff. What are we going to do for opening hockey night? Goodbye. Silly me, I got to pose for the thumbnail. How's that? <laughs> uh, here's something, you know, I played baseball my whole life and I still do. Uh, but here's something I didn't know until I had a friend who had a, a, a pro contract. Um, the bats you buy in the store, the wooden bats, are not real baseball bats. The only way you can get a real baseball bat is if you have a professional contract. And this is one of five uh, made for my buddy, Chad Bunting. Look him up. <laughs> and uh, this is one of my very prized possessions and probably weighs about twice as much as the bat that I use. Okay, have a nice day, bye. Real baseball. It's a real baseball bat, right? But the caliber uh, which the pros use and also... So they'll get delivered like 120 bats or something, and then they'll they'll look at them all. They'll feel them. They'll get rid of half of them. Um, and this this little dot here, you'll see them. If maybe you already know this, but I did not, and you can look for it now. This is the ink blot test, and the farther the ink travels down the grains, the more solid the bat is. So that's one of the the ways they decide which half of the bats they keep. Okay, bye.